Chances are, though, you were shaken in some way. And it's not just what happened, it's what's happening now. We're watching a shaking, a revolution, an, over, an overturning of morals. There will be massive earthquakes and in various places, plagues and famines. Before all things, these things come, they will lay hands on you and persecute you. End times will be times of natural calamity, shakings. He mentions, interesting mentions, plague or pandemic. There will be persecution. You will be hated for my name. Anybody see signs of that coming? Yes. Verse 20, but when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then recognize that her desolation is near. The end times, it says, will be a time when nations will be focused on Jerusalem, will come against Israel. Can you see signs of that happening? Verse 25, there will be signs in the sun, the moon, the stars, on the earth, distress among nations, perplexity at the roaring of the sea and waves, people fainting from fear, and the expectation of the things that are coming upon the world for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Now it goes on to speak about these things happening, shaking in the world, it even speaks about the waves. Waves are a fitting symbol of these days because waves speak of turbulence, of chaos even, of shaking, of change. It says the powers of the heavens will be shaken. As it is written, it says all things, everything that can be shaken shall be shaken. We've all been through a massive time of shaking, of change, of turbulence, of chaos that have disrupted all sorts of life as we have never witnessed in our lives. A plague that locked down life Everyone masked, everyone, uh, everyone locked in, a nation divided on top of that, violence in the cities, shaking, and many were shaken financially, socially, emotionally, even spiritually. Even believers were shaken. There were those who have been shaken right out of fellowship of churches, of fellowships around. You were not, but there have been those we need to pray for those who have been. Chances are, though, you were shaken in some way. And it's not just what happened, it's what's happening now. We're watching a shaking, a revolution, an, over, an overturning of morals in the spiritual realm, the overturning of morality and ethics that have, that have held together civilization for at least 2,000 years and even goes back farther. In times of shaking, of overturning, what will you do? Will you stand? In the midst of the waves, will you stand? In the book of Daniel, a vision's given in which four creatures representing the four great world empires rise out of the sea. Why the sea? The sea is made up of waves. Human history is like a sea, restless, stormy, changing, overturning. So if we're going to find out how to be strong in the waves, we have to understand what a wave is. What is a wave? A wave permeates the universe, waves, energy, light waves, sound waves, Radio waves, television waves, waves, audio waves, brain waves, seismic waves. The wave, wave is a fluctuation. Waves are a picture of earthly life. Why? Because it's always changing. You know, physics has have waves, nature has waves, history has waves. So in the Christian world there are waves as well, waves of movements. The holiness movement. The fundamentalist movement, the evangelical movement, the mega church movement, the seeker friendly, sensitive movement, and on and on for good or bad. Life itself has a wave. The first part of the wave, you're going up the wave. Second part, you're going down. Look in the mirror, things are going down the wave. It has waves. That's what it is. You know, they say, we, see, we say, oh, this one's over the hill. Well, that's a picture of a wave, you know? So that's in the physical. So, so that, that's life itself. The thing about waves, though, if you go up the one side of the wave, you go down the other. If you ride the highs of this world, you will also go down the, the lows. That's the way the world works. If you, if you ride the stock market, you know, you go up. Well, if you're still invested, you go down because it goes up and down. And the thing is, there are people who place their entire well-being on their financial, on the pieces of paper that don't mean anything by themselves, and they crash and they jumped out of windows. They killed themselves. Over that, their whole life was linked to that wave. So also if you ride the highs of emotion, 
or the highs of a situation, if that's what you're banking on, you're also going to have a low because everything changes. Everything. Romance. You know, when you're, 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 when you're courting someone, that's great. You know, romance, God uses romance, but that's not the end. You know, love is greater than romance. God's love is what's going to last. Romance comes and goes, but love is forever. Waves of pleasure. People want a quick, a quick pleasure, so what do they do? They take drugs. They take substances, and what happens? Gives them a quick up, and then it crashes for a long time. Even sugar. How many people have a problem eating too much sugar? You eat sugar, you have a wave. You go up. I'm happy. I've got energy. All that for about 15 minutes. Then it crashes. Then you feel horrible. Then you become a monster because of the sugar. Sugar is as addictive, they said, as drugs. And emotions, if you're happy because if your emotional well-being is based on the situation, you're going to go right. It's, it, it's captive to the situation. You say, oh, if I just won, if I won the lottery, you know, they, people win the lottery, talk to, see them a few years later, they're just as they were before. If your well-being is based on your possessions, your money, your abilities, your beauty, your youthfulness, your intelligence, your, you're hanging on a wave. And ultimately it's going to change. And so your peace and joy are going down with that same wave. The Apostle Paul speaks of what it's like to live a life that's tossed by every gust of wind. It's, talking, it's like the same picture. He's speaking of people who are getting lost in, do, in, in new doctrines and new teachings, but it applies to everything. He says that, Ephesians 4, that we be no more as children tossed to and fro in the wind. Note, he, contra he talks about children who don't weigh much and they're tossed. I remember being a little kid and being literally thrown, tossed by the wind. How do you know if you are riding a wave? It, you know it is that when something changes, something, a problem, a crisis, an attack, you lose your peace over it. How do you react when everything's going crazy? When you, do, do you, lo when you lose your peace, what do you lose your peace over? That's telling you you are connected to that thing. You are riding a wave. You're, you're connected to something. When, whether, it, whether it's your money, whether it's your reputation, whether it's what people think of you, you're riding a wave. You're attached to that. That's what it's showing you. So, so if it moves away, there goes your peace. A ship on a sea is subject to waves. It can't help it. It's riding the top of waves. But So how does it overcome? What if it has to stay still? It has to stay grounded. How do you do it? It uses an anchor. What's an anchor? An anchor is a heavy object, often with a, a curved shaped hook that is attached to a rope or a chain that's lowered down through the waters to the ground of the ocean, the ocean floor. And as long as the ship is tied to the anchor, it is not going to be swept away by the waves. It actually, this actually follows up what we did on, on Friday night. We spoke in Hebrews 6 of the vow that God himself swore by God and what that has to do with your life. And the next verse says this. This hope we have as an anchor, an anchor of the soul. It's a hope that is sure and reliable and which enters into the veil. An anchor. We get the word, though the Greek word literally is ankora. We get the word anchor from it. And it says anchor of the what? The suke in, in, in Greek, suke, we get the word psyche, psychology. The anchor of the soul, but that word doesn't just mean soul. It means the spirit, your spirit, your heart, your mind, and your life. What it means is your soul needs to be anchored. If your soul isn't anchored, it's going to be all over the place. You're going to be storm-tossed. You're going to lose your peace back and forth. You're going to go up and down in the Lord. But also means your spirit, the very driving thing of your life, has to be anchored in God. Your heart has to be anchored. Your emotions have to be anchored or they're going to be all over the place, subject to the world and your, your next problem. And your mind is to be an anchored mind, meaning your thoughts, if you're not anchoring, your, you're not anchored, your thoughts are going to be all over the place. You're going to stay up late at night thinking this way, scattered, scattered. God, it says here, anchor. Your mind is to be anchored. Your thought life anchored. Your life itself anchored. So there's got to be a way that we can anchor our heart, mind, 
our, our, our thoughts everything. We have this anchor and this hope. So how do you fight the waves? Let's say you're standing in a, you're standing in a storm in the sea. Waves are coming at you. It doesn't matter if you're the strongest person in the world or the heaviest person in the world. That is not enough to stop a wave, to stop a wave from sweeping you. With all that, the force of waves can overwhelm you. Think of how heavy a ship is. A ship is a lot heavier than we are. Yet, it's going to be tossed all over. So, so how does the ship do it? By the principle of anchoring. So key and few believers do it. The key and secret of anchoring yourself. How do you do it? Anchoring. I had to share my Ocean Grove uh, uh, account. I was at Ocean Grove. For those who know Ocean Grove, it's a beach community on the Jersey Shore. It was founded to be a Christian retreat center. I was there ministering at an event in the great auditorium. I stayed a little bit after the event, decided, let me go swimming. So I went into the ocean, went swimming. You know, I'll have just a little time. Although, and, and a guy recognizes me. And he's, in the, he's swimming. And he says, hey, Jonathan. I said, yeah, that you're Jonathan. Yeah, I said, glad you're here. He said, Jonathan, I have a counseling question. Can you counsel me? So here we are in the ocean. And he wants a counseling session. And the thing is, the waves are coming, storming, stormy, coming, big waves. And it would come, like a wave would come and we'd go up and down. I'm scouting him. And we'd be waiting for the next wave because we'd get thrown off. It was strong and high. So we're talking and then all of a sudden both of us up and down and we're losing and he's drifting away and I'm trying to get back in council. He's drifting. And, and we're talking and, 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 and what he wanted to know was, he said, Here, here's the thing. He said, he said, here's my question. He says, I keep on going up and down. Always going up and down. I'm always tossed this. I'm always, my walk is all over the place. And, and, I'm, and we're going up and down as he's saying it. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking, okay, well, how do I, have the, how do, I do this? It's not working because we keep on getting thrown away. And so I said, you know, I see, then I see this big, thick rope that's from the, from the shore and it's, it's going across. I said, let's get to the rope. We get to the rope. I said, let's just hold on to it. So we hold, so we hold on and the next wave comes and we're okay. The, the wave came, but we are not being thrown off. And I'm thinking, here I am to answer the question. The Lord is telling me the answer. He asks me, how do you be strong? How do you stay? How do you live a strong, uh, immovable life in God and not be moved by what comes up? It's not about trying to be strong. That's nice, but it's not, that's not what it is. The Bible doesn't say try to be strong. It says be strong in the power of His might. Not yours. That is, how do you do it with a rope? You hold on to that which is strong. You bind yourself to that which is immovable. You hold yourself, you get real close and real stuck on that which is greater than you. Stronger than you, stronger than the world. So it's not about how strong you are, it's about how, how strong your connection you make it. The way of strength and stability emotional, intellectual, heart ways, spiritual, morally, isn't about I'm going to be strong, although that's nice to want that. It's by anchoring yourself on Him who is. Be strong in the Lord and in His power of His might. By getting, by learning how, getting good at the key of anchoring yourself. Because when you do that, when you anchor yourself to God, his power becomes your power. When a ship anchors itself to the floor of the ocean, the ship becomes as steady as the floor through the waves. And the boat that is anchored is not out of the storm. It's not out of the waves. You know what? Well, we want God to end the problem, and that's fine. But sometimes God's saying, no, I want you to become strong in the problem this time. It's I want you to keep your peace in the midst of it. It's not about getting out of the storm or the problem. It's about anchoring yourself through the problem. Anchoring is cutting through the problem, cutting through the world, cutting through that thing that's burdening your, that's heavy on you, cutting through it, sending your rope through that right, cut right through it, through beyond it to Him who is at the other end, who is heavenly. Hi, I'm Jonathan Kahn, and I hope you were blessed with the video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Feel free to share your reactions with your comments and how you were blessed, and share this video with your friends. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.